Hello and welcome back to the Coded Legacy channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys something very cool and something that has not been done before. Basically, this is something that I recently came across. It's a question that I saw somewhere, so I decided to take a look into it. I tried solving it. Um, I tried finding a native solution for it um, to see if taking care supported such a feature. I tried to find a third-party solution, but there was none because you know there are some good third-party libraries out there for taking care which have different widgets. Um, but I couldn't find anything, so then I decided to make my own solution. So what is this feature that I'm talking about? Well, to help you understand this feature, I'm going to run this short piece of code that involves the takeinter combo box, okay? The native takeinter combo box from the TTK module. So there's these options in here, and there's quite, there's quite a few options. So we have like apple, banana, cherry, quite a few options. Okay, now imagine that we had like 30 or 40 options and we had to like filter through all of these. We had to search through all of them. That's quite a bit, right? Uh, that's quite a bit of options. And what we typically expect in a modern GUI is that we have some kind of search feature within the combo box. For example, I type the letter P over here and then it filters them out based on, you know, the P. It filters out like peach and peer, for example. So that's what we would normally expect from a modern GUI. We would also expect that like while we're typing, you know, like the, the, the dropdown shows and shows us which options are being filtered out as we type them. So these are the two features, basically the filtering feature and the dropdown visible feature that I will be showing you guys in today's video. So basically what I've done is created a class called searchable combo box that implements these features. Okay, now I've made this in a class so you guys can use it as well. You can just copy it and then use it like this, okay, uh, and edit it ho however you want to. Now let me just discuss this class briefly, then I'll show you what it looks like. Basically, we have the init method where we created an int entry widget in the list box. This is actually the basis behind the combo box, how it's created. That's why it's not called a native widget. It's called, um, well, it's a different type of widget that's created out of out of other take inter widgets. And this is not my own invention, by the way. This is actually how the combo box itself, the official combo box, this is how it's constructed using an entry widget and a list box. Okay, so I also, also created a drop down icon. I used an image for that, this, this image right here. Then um, we've connected it to the appropriate functions, also binded the appropriate key bindings like this function on entry key, which is the filtering function that we'll discuss in a minute. So this one is executed whenever we type in uh, a keyboard key, like I pressed the word A or B or C. So this function is executed every single on every single key press or actually more to be more specific when we release the key. This function is executed whenever we focus in on the entry widget, like I click on it, so then it becomes focused. So it's going to show the drop down uh, when I focus on it. And of course, this also toggles the drop down. So I click on it, it'll show. I click on it again, it'll disappear. And the list box is also binded to a function that when I click on the list box, on the drop down, then that option, like I click on Apple, so Apple will become inserted into the entry widget. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Let me just show you all of these functions briefly. We have on entry key that is, you know, clicked, that is f executed whenever we click on a key. So if the entry widget is empty, we just show all options. If the entry widget is not empty, then what we do is filter through the list of options and check for the options that start with the value that is entered within the entry widget. So if I type in P, then filter out all the options that start uh, with P, okay? And then only show those filtered options and then show the dropdown, which is in the show dropdown uh, method. So let's just discuss that one first. Basically what that does, the show dropdown menu uh, function is that it first places the list box because it's important to note that we never actually placed the list box anywhere. Normally you have to call either place, pack, or grid. We did not do that, so we just created it, okay? We haven't shown it. So if I run this code just brief briefly, you'll see that the list box is not a visible, okay? Until the show dropdown method is called, which then places it, and it's placed in a bit of a unique way using this unique parameter. It's placed basically um, relative to the entry widget and, you know, self.entry. Then 
it, this is also important, this rel width parameter, it's basically kept as the same width as the entry widget. So uh, relative width of one means that keep it the same uh, width as the widget that you mentioned over here, self.entry, the entry widget. So 0 0.5, for example, would have made it like half the width. Now lift makes sure that it comes over any other widgets that might be below it. That's why this randomly placed label is over here. So if I click on this, then you'll see that the label widget, sorry, the list box widget goes over the label widget, okay? Then if I show you the next part of this function, which is this, the after method. The after method is a, an important concept for those of you who don't know. Basically what this does is that it takes two parameters, milliseconds and a function, and it will execute the function after this many milliseconds. So what I'm doing here basically is after every three seconds or every 3000 milliseconds, I'm hiding the dropdown. I'm only showing the dropdown temporarily. Okay, and if there's any existing events, like if I rapidly called this function twice, then it's going to cancel the previous event and then create a new one, okay? So let me just quickly show you how it works. I think we know enough by now. The only method we haven't discussed is this one, the onSelect method, which is really just simple. It just deletes the current value in the entry widget and then inserts the option that we selected, okay? So that was a bit technical, I know, but now we're done and we can just spend the next few minutes discussing this UI. So if I click on this, we can see that the dropdown has shown because we focused in on it. And as I mentioned earlier, you see over here, we have the focus in event which shows the dropdown. It only shows for three seconds. So if I type in, for example, I type in P now. So now we have the dropdown showing uh, and we have those two options appeared, the ones that start with P. I type E, both of them still appear because both of them have E in the next letter. I type A, both of them still appear. I'll type C, but now only Peach is here because only Peach uh, is the string that matches these requirements, okay? So now you can kind of get the gist of how I've constructed this. I've done it on a timer-based approach so that as we type, then, you know, this dropdown will continue showing and it will disappear shortly afterwards. It would be a bit tricky to make it permanently. Um, you could do that. You could make it permanent and then you could make it disappear whenever you shift focus to another widget. That's also an option you can consider, but this is just how I've done it. You guys can do it however you want to. I'm going to make this code available to you guys now, so you feel free to use it however you want to. Okay, hope you guys found this video interesting and useful. So again, I'll leave a link in the description where you can find this class.